<laughs> Hi, friends. I'm your old pal, Papa Dale. I'm a retired pastor, teacher, theologian, and professor with over 50 years of service to the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Dale Warren, but professionally I'm known in my writing, teaching, and lectures as D.A. Warren. My friends, they just all call me Papa Dale, so you too can call me Papa Dale. Now you can see the details of my personal testimony, family life, education, and ministry experience on other videos on this playlist. But for now, let's get right into today's topic. And today's topic is the lecture on 2 Peter. This is the JHI, the Jan Hus Institute, uh, the Bachelor of Arts in Biblical Literature degree program. And this is the 2 Peter lecture. And here we go. Second Peter is a New Testament epistle traditionally attributed to the Apostle Peter. Evangelical sources interpret it as addressing the early Christian community with a focus on combating false teaching and encouraging a steadfast Christian life. Evangelicals generally accept that Peter, the leader of the early church, wrote this epistle. It is commonly dated around A.D. 65 through 68, towards the end of Peter's life. This letter is seen as a final exhortation to the believers to remain true to their faith. The primary purpose of 2 Peter is to address the problem of false teachers who were infiltrating the church. These false teachers were promoting heretical views that contradicted the teachings of Christ and the apostles. Peter writes to warn against these individuals and to reaffirm the truth of the gospel. Now, Peter opens with a greeting, identifying himself as a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. He emphasizes that his authority comes from Jesus, who has given believers everything they need for a godly life. Peter stresses the importance of growing in faith, virtue, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. And he argues that these qualities will keep believers from being ineffective and unproductive in their knowledge of Jesus Christ. He underscores the importance of remembering the teachings that he has imparted and the significance of recalling the prophetic word and the promises of Christ's return. And the concept of the certainty of Christ's return is seen in chapter 1, verses 16 through 21. Peter affirms the certainty of Christ's second coming. He contrasts the truth of the gospel with the myths propagated by false teachers, asserting that the apostles were eyewitnesses of Jesus' majesty, and these false apostles were not. He emphasizes the reliability of the prophetic word, asserting that prophecy comes from God and is not a matter of personal interpretation. And so he denounces these false teachers, chapter 2, 1 through 22. Peter vividly describes the characteristics and fate of false teachers. They are depicted as deceitful, driven by greed, and disruptive to the community. Peter warns that their judgment is certain. He uses examples from the past, such as the rebellion of the angels and the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, to illustrate that God will not overlook such transgressions. Now, sometimes from our point of view, God is slow to act. That's only because he's patient, and he's hoping that people will return to faithful service to him. Uh, but the chapter concludes with a description of the false teacher's immoral behavior and their ultimate demise, urging believers to be vigilant and reject their teachings. Speaking of teachings, Peter has something to say about the so-called Day of the Lord, chapter 3, 1 through 13. He addresses the skepticism regarding Christ's return, and he reminds believers of the promises made and the certainty of their fulfillment. Jesus himself told his disciples, 
If I go away, I will return again to receive you unto myself. This is a direct promise from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Peter explains that any apparent delay in Christ's return is due to God's patience, allowing time for repentance. The eventual coming of the Lord will be marked by dramatic and cosmic events. Peter encourages believers to live holy and godly lives, looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. See if I can get some of the glare off these glasses. Let's try that for a while. And then Peter gives some final exhortations and a final doxology in chapter 3, verses 14 through 18, where he says, Peter concludes with a call to steadfastness and growth in grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. He urges believers to be diligent, avoid the pitfalls of false teachings, and remain faithful in their Christian walk. Walk being a euphemism for lifestyle. The letter ends with a doxology, praising Jesus Christ and acknowledging his eternal glory. Evangelical sources view 2 Peter as a vital document that stresses the importance of adhering to true doctrine, remaining vigilant against false teachings, and living a life of holiness in anticipation of Christ's return. Well, let's do a deep dive now into 2 Peter. 2 Peter is also known as the second epistle of Peter, and it's abbreviated very often as 2 Pete. <laughs> it is an epistle of the New Testament written in Koine Greek, and it identifies the author as Simon Peter, in some translations, Simeon or Shimon. And it says that he is a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ. See 2 Peter 1.1. 1, 1. The epistle is traditionally attributed to Peter the Apostle, but critical skeptics consider the epistle pseudepigraphical, which means authored by one or more of Peter's followers using Peter as a pseudonym. The estimated date of the authorship is anywhere from A.D. 60 to 150. And evangelicals and I, as an evangelical, dispute this. We say, baloney, uh, it is authored by the Apostle Peter. Now, according to the, the book itself, it was composed by the Apostle Peter and eyewitness to Jesus' ministry. 2 Peter 3.1 says, this is now the second letter I've written to you. This is a clear reference to 1 Peter, having been, been written to the same audience uh, of the epistle 1 Peter, and, name, and namely various churches in Asia Minor see 1 Peter 1.1. 1, 1. Taken literally, it would have been written around 60 AD, AD 64 to 68, as Christian tradition holds that Peter was martyred in the 60s by Nero, and also because Peter references his approaching death in 2 Peter 1.14, where he says, Since I know that the putting off of my body will be soon, as our Lord Jesus Christ made clear to me. Now, one of the questions to be resolved is to Peter's relationship with the Pauline letters, since it refers to the Pauline epistles, and so must po post-date at least some of them. Thus, a date before A.D. 60 is improbable. Further, to Peter goes on, goes so far as to name the Pauline epistles as scriptures. Only one of two times a New Testament work refers to another New Testament work in this way, implying that it postdates them by some period of time. Various hypotheses have been put forward to improve or resolve the issue. One notable hypothesis is that the first epistle of Clement, AD 96, by citing as scripture several of Pauline, Pauline several of the Pauline letters was inspired by 2 Peter because it was considered authentic. 
Now, this would mean that even the recipients of one Clement, the inhabitants of Corinth, would have also considered it authentic, which would indicate that the letter must have been in circulation long before that time. In other words, 2 Peter was in circulation long before the letter of Clement. Uh, and the earliest reference to a Pauline collection is probably found in Ignatius of Antioch around A.D. 108. The most commonly memorized verse from 2 Peter is 2 Peter 1, verse 3, which reads, quote, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. This verse is frequently cited for its message about the sufficiency of God's provision for living a Christian life and the importance of knowing Christ. Now, this has been your old pal, Papa Dale, your host for this lecture on the epistle of 2 Peter. I will remind you, if you are studying for the Bachelor of Arts in Biblical Literature degree, you are required to read the lecture notes of this and every lecture, and you are you can find those uh, lecture notes in the uh, video transcripts that uh, are uh, are on your screen with each lecture video. Also, below the video, you'll find a link to uh, our the blog site where the lecture notes are also uh, stated. And now, in addition to that. It is required that you also look up every Bible citation, so don't forget to do that. And until the next video, if the Lord lets me put up another one, this is your old pal, Papa Dale, saying, I'll be praying for you, <laughs> that you will be well and that you will be blessed. <laughs>